Hey guys, I was uh, going over the list of uh, different requested videos and see what was next. And I had uh, quite a few people um, contact me in messages and emails and and uh, different um, video responses and ask if I can do a video on um, different types of steels that are used in knives and the difference because it, it, it's very overwhelming when you're buying knives or getting into um, you know good production knives it's a little intimidating because you hear all these different numbers thrown at you you know like uh, you gotta check out this knife it has VG10 and you're like what what's VG10 you know or this one's so much better it's S30V you know and it, it's very overwhelming um, and it's hard to understand at first you know so I was gonna do a whole video but uh, on this um, but I have to say I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a link uh, this paper I printed about a year ago hopefully this site the site still exists but I'm going to give you the, the little um, link here, okay? And I want you to put this in your browser and hit OK, and it'll bring you to this page, hopefully. And uh, underneath underneath the, the actual chart should be um, this second page, which has each individual element and a little blurb on it explaining what it does for the steel. And I want you guys to just look at it and take your time in, in reading it and trying to understand that way. Um, uh, like I said, I was gonna. I actually made a video before this, and I started going over all the different things, and you know, I, I barely got through it, and uh, it was, you know, over over my ten minutes. That I usually like try to keep the videos at, um, so it's very very time consuming. I, in order for me to explain all this, it would literally take probably seven or eight different videos. Um, so instead of doing all that, I'm just gonna have you read it because it's it's very very simple the way this this site is set up. Like, like I said, you're going to have a steel chart, okay? And this one, I have these different ones highlighted because the, the, the highlighted ones are the ones that I have personally tried myself. Um, and originally what I wanted to do was uh, take notes on different steels and see which one works the best for me. But uh, I never actually got around to doing it. I just ended up highlighting a bunch that were in my collection and that's it. And this paper just kind of got tucked under a desk. But, um, but anyway, when you go to the site, the left column is going to have uh, all the steels. And it, this shows, you know most of the steels that are used on the market today. Um, something this this uh, chart does not show is BG42. BG42 steel is, uh, is very, very good. It's very hard steel. Uh, it's actually used uh, mostly by um, Christopher Reeve uh, in the Sebenza, the older models, I believe from like 98, 99. Um, they had BG42. Uh, and it's a great performing steel. Unfortunately, it's not on this chart. Um, uh, also, this is a steel chart, so it's not going to have titanium on there. But titanium is used uh, in some some companies use it um, for blade material. Um, it's not titanium is not the best blade material to use. Uh, obviously, it'll never rust. You know, so that's one thing going for it. It just it just physically can't rust. But then again, the H1 steel can't rust, uh, which Spyderco uses, and I think Benchmade has on maybe one or two of their models. But uh, but any titanium is not the best. It doesn't hold an edge very well. It's a little soft. Um, certain companies do use it. They have a different grade titanium that's a little bit better. Um, but anyway, for the most part, that's kind of rare. But anyway, uh, I did want to give you this link to go to the site. Um, and it is uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash rusticforge.com forward slash knives forward slash steel chart dot htm let me try to get that focus hopefully you can make that out in case you didn't can uh, you know type as I'm saying it but anyway uh, go to that page and you're gonna get this you know this here and uh, it's gonna give you all the information you need and basically what you're doing is you're looking at the steel okay and then you're seeing the different different elements like carbon, chromium, nickel, tungsten. Well, tungsten's only in the M2 um, tool steel, but vanadium. And you're going to look at the different levels, okay? And at first you're going to say, well, you know, okay, you know, 1095 carbon steel. It's got between 0 0.90 and 1.03 uh, carbon. What does that mean, really? And it doesn't explain what the numbers mean, but what you can do is you look up carbon, which is the first element on the, on, you know, underneath the chart. And for this one, it says uh, carbon increases edge retention. And edge retention is just how long it's going to stay sharp. Um, raises tensile strength, increases hardness, and improves resistance to wear and abrasion. 
Um, a general rule of thumb is the more carbon, the better the steel. So, and then what you do is you take that little bit of information you just read, and you compare the carbon amounts to the other steels. Okay, and this will hopefully give you an idea of uh, what each steel is about, and uh, to help you better understand steel in general and the you know what the steel is made up of. Um, something I'm highly going to recommend you do is as soon as you don't watch this video, if you, if you got nothing to do and you're not in a rush, uh, do a YouTube search for Alton Brown, A-L-T-O-N, and his last name, B-R-O-W-N. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, in the United States, he is a, uh, a huge uh, um, known chef on the Food Network. Uh, he has his own show called Good Eats, um, and what he does is uh, he takes a very scientific approach to cooking, and, uh, and he explains, and it's a very entertaining show, it's good for kids, you know, and and even me, I mean, I'm not a kid, but I, I love the show. Maybe it's a little dorky, but I find it very, very interesting. Um, and if you love, if you like to cook, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's only available here in the States, but I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, do a search for his name. And on the first page, you're going to see one of his videos on YouTube. I don't know if he posted it or not. Obviously, probably not. Someone posted it, uh, you know, the video of, of him. But he does explain... Um, very very well in a very good presentation on sharpening knives and like scientifically what exactly is happening like he, he uses these good um you know studio models and stuff and and also he explains the composition of steel in this video and he tells you okay well this element does this and he uses a great analogy he compares steel to uh cakes in that just like cakes steel has a couple main ingredients in the you know in, the form of a cake, you have flour. Like every cake has flour, every cake has, um, you know, egg. But but even though they have the basic main ingredients, you have all different flavor cakes, and that's just like steel. You know, I you got to check out the video. It's very very informative, um, very entertaining, and you know, once you watch that video, right off the bat, you're gonna have a better understanding of steel. Uh, and then you can go to the site and use these uh, actual numbers as. Uh, you know, as references and uh, to get more information on it and compare steels with other other steels. And then the right column here, you'll notice on the site, it says hardness. This is a Rockwell hardness uh, number. If you're not familiar with it, the Rock West, Rockwell hardness um, test is a uh, big machine and it has a diamond tip, uh, kind of like a punch. And what they do is they put steel in the machine and the diamond tip pushes down on the steel and makes a little indent. And the machine measures, uh, in, in, you know, in this format, uh, how hard the steel is. And the average knife steel, you know, and this is just, you know, vague average, is between 58 and 60. Um, and this will let you know, you, so you can compare how hard certain steels are to other ones. Um, ZDP-189, uh, which is used, Spyderco uses this, and um, Kershaw came out with a, uh, a couple of different um, of their models, like the Leak has a ZD, ZDP-189 version. Um, their Cyclone has a titanium handle. One of the versions has a titanium handle, a ZDP-189 blade. Um, but anyway, this steel is like it's so extremely hard, it's like ridiculous. I mean, this uh, the Rockwell Harness is 68, and that's pretty unheard of for knives. Um, extremely, extremely hard. Um, the chromium level, you'll notice, is off the charts here. It's 20. Average chromium level being 14 or 15, you know, in, in other steels. Um, but it's like, it's just extremely hard. And what you want to look for is uh, what's going to work best for you. If you're dealing with a lot of stuff like, um, I don't know, if you have to cut wire, electrician, something like that, you don't necessarily want extremely hard steel on your on your blade. Um, because you it tend, the harder the steel is, it tends to be a little more brittle. Especially in chromium. When you get into higher chromium levels, you're going to have a tendency of getting a little bit brittle. Uh, meaning that if you uh, use it on hard materials like plastics and, of course, metal, even, even something like copper, you have a tendency of chipping the blade. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I hope this video was helpful. Um, definitely check out this site and definitely check out the Alton Brown video uh, here on YouTube. And uh, that should uh, give you a good explanation, a very good start in uh, understanding steel and why they use certain steels. So that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.